in Toronto being a, a national market, I'm, I'm interested how much you feel that pressure in the dressing room. You know, you've coached a lot of teams and specifically uh, the Anaheim Ducks for a long time. How, how, how much does it actually af- affect the players, the staff, the way you prepare, just all the, the extra weight of the media and fan base? Well, uh, I was the, the guy that first determined and named it white noise. Yeah. That was, the, that was the term that we tried to do, and we tried to insulate our players from it and not to focus on those things. But it's really, really difficult for a player or a coaching staff or anybody that's involved with the hockey club to block it out. But that was one, one of the things that we tried to do is to, to understand that, yes, we, we adore the fans and the market's great and all the things that go with it. But inevitably, we're going to be judged by our success or, or failures. And when you have a little bit of success, it, the momentum grows. And then when you when you have failure, it's twice as hard. The pressure comes from different levels. So it's it's always when, when you win in sports, you're probably not as good as you think you are. And when you lose in sports, you're probably not as bad as you think you are. Randy, when it comes to coaches today, then maybe you know, 15 or 20 years ago, it, does it take someone a lot more savvy now to handle that, especially in a market like Toronto. Like let's, I'll be honest. I mean, it can't be easy for Sheldon when we have a daily show every day and we got his quotes and we dissect his quotes and we're, Oh, today he said uh, the, the series could be borderline violent, you know? And just in terms of today's coaches and, and that savviness, is that a must today? Well, I think it's, it's, it's a must from a standpoint of, you can only control so many things and your number one job when you're the coach and in going into any hockey game is to make sure you've got the right people on the ice at the right time. Never lose sight of the fact of that. And I don't think it, it matters in today's game versus the game 20 years ago, 50 years ago, coaching has evolved and the players have evolved, the games evolved, but there's still the number one job of the head coach is to make sure that he's got his people on the right people on the ice at the right time. And he utilizes the strengths of his hockey club. And that's the most important thing. So however you get there, however your personality and how, whatever message you, you deliver and how you deliver it. The most important thing is to make sure you have the right people on the ice at the right time. And, and that's uh, really interesting given the way the Leafs lineup looks tonight. You know, you, Randy, you've coached multiple teams into the conference final. You won a Stanley cup. Um, you know, you've got a lot of experience with this. Do you think it's more important to lean into the strengths of that roster? You know, the, the Leafs are typically a speedier skilled team or to play the way you think playoff hockey needs to be played. They're dressing Clifford and Simmons in a, in a heavier lineup in lieu of guys like Spezza and Hall tonight. Well, I, I think again, the playoffs are a different animal. Yeah. First off, the defensive side of the game gets improved by 25 to 30%. Goals become much more difficult to score in the playoffs. The amount of freedom that's created on the ice or allowed on the ice, you're trying to, to not allow that to happen at a regular rate. You're trying not to allow the opposition freedom in the areas in which they like to, to create offense. And that's going to be a challenge for both hockey clubs tonight. Is Tampa going to be able to limit it, limit the amount of space that Matthews and Marner and Nylander and those likes of those players have enjoyed all season? And vice versa, is Tampa going to be, you know, put in, put themselves in a position they're going to be able to create that space? So it's, it's all of those things that are combined. But again, it's going to be the competition for the puck. Who's going to win more puck battles? Who's going to get inside and create more offense? Who's going to draw more penalties? And in reality, it's going to boil down to, you know, who wants it more and who's going to be more effective and make less mistakes. When it comes to the lineup, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they've, they've, they've got some experience under their belts of uh, some past failures. Uh, as young as they are, the Matthews, the Marners, the Rileys, they, they, they should have some thicker skin. Um, you know, we were debating on whether or not Boston or Tampa would have been uh, better for the Leafs because, of course, you know, and we include, you know, the meltdown that you unfortunately experienced in Boston or, or the ones that followed, you know, the weight of the players carrying into this game one do you feel like you know as, as young as the players are that somehow some way the the media or the fan base has a way of piling on these young players 
Uh, I think it, it goes part and parcel with the market, but I, I don't think that those things, once that puck drops, I think those things are, are all by the wayside. The players get on, on the ice and they get into their own little set of, of mindset and they're out there to play it to, to have success. And they're going to do what they, they deem is necessary. Like I, I said earlier, Toronto's lineup is as deep as it's ever been. It's as skilled as it's ever been. And probably it's as tough as the new era of the Leafs has ever been. So they're going to give themselves a chance in all areas of the ice, but they're going to take on the Stanley Cup champs. And they've equally got as, as much potency with experience. And if you look at their teams down the middle of the ice, the goaltender, the defense, the center ice, it's hard to go up against Tampa and say they, they, they don't have an edge. Yeah, no question about that. So uh, Clifford and, and Simmons over Spezza, you're okay with that uh, like uh, uh, that, that type of look early in a series? Well, I think it's going to be, you know, I, I, to look at it, I've always believed that your, your skilled players have to feel comfortable on the ice. So who's going to try and disrupt that for the Tampa Bay Hockey Club? It's going to be Patrick Maroon. It's going to be Corey Perry. It's going to be Belmar. It's going to be some of their bigger rugged defensemen. And if your skilled players don't feel comfortable and aren't allowed the freedom that they're accustomed to, they're not going to. Don't, I don't think they're going to expect them to perform. But Toronto's played in these situations, and, and I like the the addition of Giordano and Labushkin that has given them some stability on the back end and they've added that. And those, both of those players can play in physical situations and they're veteran guys. And however their team, and then however the 20 guys that they're dressing tonight, they feel that they're giving themselves the best chance with that personnel. And that's up to the people inside for me to criticize from an outsider or to, to say that I don't like it. I don't live it with them day to day. I've been criticized numerous times for the, my selection, and I think that it, in reality, is it's up to the coach and the coaching staff because they know their team the best. So you like Toronto in this series? I like that the Toronto Maple Leafs for the changes that they made and the, uh, the approach that they've taken. I like their back end. I just don't know if they're deep enough to beat the Tampa Bay Lightning when you look at. The, the strength of the Tampa Bay Hockey Club down the middle of the ice.